Oh, hello, this is Miraj Patel, and today we're going to be talking about periodic trends, and this will be the last un uh, video for Unit 4. And so here's the PowerPoint, and so we're going to be talking about three periodic trends, and these are the three observed trends, and they are atomic radius, ionization energy, and electronegativity. And pretty much atomic radius is the size. Ionization energy is the energy needed to take an electron or lose an electron. And electronegativity is attraction to electrons. And we're going to be explaining them in terms of nuclear charge or the protons and shielding. And here's the first trend we're going to talk about is the size, or the first thing we're going to talk about is the nuclear charge and shielding. And here are some elements on the periodic table. And as we move across a period, the the atomic radius starts in I mean decreasing. And uh, the reason why it decreases is because the atomic charge increases, or the nuclear charge increases, which is the protons attracting electrons. And basically, these protons pull stronger as we move from left to right in a period. And that's all because of the protons. And as we go down a group, there's more and more shells, so the atoms actually increase their size or radius. And this has to do with shielding because simply because there's more and more shields or rings, the atom just gets bigger. And also because the inner electrons block the outer outer ring, so it increases. <clears throat> and here is a chart showing the periodic trend of atomic radius and so you can see the largest is uh, this one and then the smallest is up in this corner helium and the reason why is as we go down we have more and more rings so just simply by having more rings the atoms become larger and then also as we move from uh, right to left that there are less and less protons and so because there's less protons the electrons are resisting less forces and so <clears throat> so the more protons you have like in the noble gases the more protons you have the closer the electrons will be because the protons are pulling them in but if you have less protons on the same row so for example like lithium, this is so much larger than neon because there's less protons pulling in. And again, it decreases across the period from left to right due to more protons and increases down a group because of more energy levels. And uh, and here's another, uh, another little part of, about it. And so ions are atoms that lost or gained electrons and so cations are positive and anions are negative and so cations are positive because electro electrons are removed so if you take away some negative then it becomes more positive and a good way to remember cations is think of cats cats are usually positive most people have positive reactions to cats and then anions are from nonmetals, so nonmetals like chlorine and fluorine become anions, and this is caused by gaining electrons. And cations are positive, positive, anions are negative, and cations are smaller because there's more proton, there's less electrons resisting, so there's proportionally more protons than new electrons, so it's smaller, and anions are larger because there's more electrons g pulling out and cations 
they lose outer shell electrons and uh, anions form and gain electrons so there's more uh, repulsion and um, the next trend we'll be talking about is ionization energy and so here we have a chart full of ionization energy and each of these lines represents a period so this is period one this is period two this is period three period four period five so as we go down the periods the ionization energy decreases actually and so if you look helium is the first period and then there's neon argon krypton xenon and so the energy is decreasing as we go down and then as we go from right I mean left to right in a period the ionization energy is increasing so for example lithium is all the way lithium sodium potassium rubidium they're all on the left side of the periodic table and these are all on the right so as we go from left to right the ionization energy increases and this all has to do with protons and shielding and so we'll talk about it in the next slide and ionization energy by the way is the energy required to remove an electron and down a group it decreases and uh, and across the period from left to right it increases and this all has to do with shielding and protons and so here we have a diagram of the ionization energies and so the height represents how much energy it takes and increase across the period because there's more protons so pretty much if as we move from lithium to neon more and more protons are added and so because there's more and more protons there is a more of a nuclear attraction so the nucleus is really is holding on to those electrons so that is why it increases from left to right then as we go down a group it decreases because there's more shielding so because we have more rings the it's harder for the protons is force to affect the outer outer rings so pretty much because there's more and more rings the atom or the protons have a hard time pulling back all of them so you can just think of it as like trying to watch one person versus watching 50 people so if, because there's just simply more and more rings and more and more layers it's harder for you to keep track of your group or for like the nucleus to hold back the entire group so it's and this all has to do with rings so moving down so more rings less attraction and here we have the last trend which is electronegativity and electronegativity is an atom's ability to attract bonded electrons so this is an atom's ability to take another electron from something else and it increases across a period and because this has to do with more protons so pretty much because there's more protons there's more attraction to the center or to the atom and then it decreases down a group because again more shielding and uh, this uh, shielding prevents more like prevents the f force of the nucleus to pull in another electron and notice how the noble gases except xenon have no electronegativity and this has to do with because noble gases they have a full octet or full valence shell they don't want any more electrons so they have pretty much no electronegativity at all and uh, and uh, as we go down a group because there's more shielding again there is less force on other electrons so it's harder to pull in an electron when you already have so many rings because the rings block the force and here's a summary of all the periodic trends and so atomic radius decreases as we go from left to right ionization energy and electronegativity both increase so a good way and um, then as we go down 
uh, atomic radius increases and ionization energy and electronegativity both decrease. And the reason atomic radius decreases as we move from left to right is because there's more protons, there's, there's a more central force, so the electrons are pulled in tighter. And ionization energy and electronegativity increase because, because there's more protons, there's more of a force on the electrons. So it's easier to steal an electron and it's harder to take away an electron because there's more of a force pulling them in. And then as we go down, atomic radius increases because simply there's more shields, so it just becomes wider and wider. Ionization energy decreases because the di more and more shields prevent the nuclear force from, um, from affecting those outer electrons. So it's pretty easy to steal an electron from a atom that has a bunch of shields because that nucleus isn't really projecting its force that much on the outer electrons because of all those rings. And same with thing with electronegativity because we have so many rings the nucleus has does a poor job at keeping those uh, valence electrons in so it's easy to uh, it's hard for um, an atom with a lot of shields to take a new electron because let alone they can't keep their own electrons. And a good way to uh, remember atomic radius is just in all these trends is just think of the highest the best example for atomic radius you can just remember the largest is in the bottom left and for ionization energy and electronegativity just remember the the most electronegative or the highest energy ionization energy is in the top right so that's and so pretty much the closer you are to these master uh, elements so like fluorine is the most electronegative and it also has the highest ener ionization energy just remember the closer you are to fluorine the stronger ionization energy electronegativity and for atomic radius just look at francium which is this bottom corner element so the closer you are to francium the larger you are so that is how I remember it a cool trick just look at the top two corners and see how close they are and of course you gotta know these rules just in case if they happen to be the same distance and uh, here's a quick quiz to see what you learned atoms get blank down a blank so A, bigger, comma, period, B, smaller, comma, group, C, bigger, comma, group, D, smaller, comma, period. So atoms get blank down a what? So the first method I would use is just look at the second blank because the periodic table is split into periods and groups. So moving vertically is a group. So the second blank has to be a group so you can only make A and D and atoms like we looked at when we moved down a group what did they get did they get bigger or smaller well as we move down a group there's more and more rings and the largest atoms are at the very bottom because of the most rings so atoms get bigger as we move down a group because more and more shielding and so pretty much pretty much more energy levels and there's more shielding so there's less attraction and so the electrons can go farther apart and so here's the second question atomic radii blank across the period a atoms get bigger b atoms get smaller c atoms stay the same size or d atoms and so atomic radii blank across the period. So atomic radii atoms get bigger across the period or smaller. We know they don't stay the, sa stay the same. And D just doesn't make sense. Atomic radii atoms across the period that doesn't have no adjective. So, so it's either A or B. And as we go across the period from left to right, there are more and more protons and so protons hold in the electrons so we have the nucleus here and the electrons and so the more protons we have 
the closer the electrons will be. So the, the atomic radii atoms get smaller because again there are more protons so more nuclear charge so more attraction to the center okay so three which of the following correctly orders the atomic size uh, from largest to smallest so let's just go through all these answers and see how large they are or compare their sizes to each other and so this would be a good time to pull out your periodic table and so the the quick way to compare sizes is compare their location to francium which is the largest element and so first let's look at the first answer so f c l and b r and remember it's largest to smallest so this is the exact opposite because all three of these elements are on top of each other and fluorine is the closest to the top which would be smaller because less rings so A is out and let's look at B lithium sodium and potassium so lithium is on top that of sodium which is on top of a potassium so that is also just like answer A it's the opposite because because it's closer to the top there's less rings so lithium is smallest and uh, potassium is the largest, so that's wrong. And let's look at C. F, N, and B. So fluorine, nitrogen, and bro uh, boron. And so they're all in the same period. So the closest, closer you are to the right, the smaller you are. So fluorine is the smallest out of all of these. And then nitrogen is the second smallest. And then boron is the largest. So this is wrong. This is the exact opposite. So the correct answer is D. But let's just look at it just to make sure. So Mg, Al, and sulfur. And so they're all in the same period. But Mg is the closest to the left. So it has less protons. So it's larger. And then aluminum is the second largest. And then sulfur is the smallest. Because it has most protons. And all these have the same number of rings so we don't have to look at rings and so the answer is D and it all has to do with protons and shielding and then metals tend to blank electrons to form blank cations and so the answer I mean the answers are a gain and positive B gain and negative C lose and negative or D lose and positive so first of all t let's just answer the second blank so cations remember like cats cats are usually positive like most people think cats are fuzzy and cute and so that would be positive emotion so the second blank has to be positive and just by process of elimination to electrons we know are negative so to be more positive you have to what with electrons you have to lose electrons to be positive so the answer is D just if you didn't know that metals uh, form cations and nonmetals form anions and the whole reason is because metals they're so close they're um, the metals tend to have a few valence electrons so it's easier for them to lose some electrons to get to a octet rather than gaining a ton of electrons and uh, nonmetals it's opposite and nonmetals they can easily gain a few electrons to become an octet rather than lose a bunch of electrons so that is why uh, nonmetals gain electrons and why metals tend to lose electrons so question number five as you go across period three from mg to cl energy needed to remove an electron from an atom a generally increases b generally decreases c does not change or varies unpredictably it's not c or d because we we know we talked about a trend so it does so c it can't be true because it does change and d it has it varies like predictably that's why we have a trend so a trend tends to vary predictably and so it has to either increase or decrease.
So let's just go to the periodic table. So go to period 3 and find magnesium and find chlorine. So magnesium is on the left and chlorine is on the right. So as we move from magnesium to chlorine, there are more and more protons. And so as we add more and more protons, there's a more uh, attraction to the center. So it would be harder to remove an electron because there's so many protons and it's because it's like a stronger magnet so because we have more positive force in the center the electrons will be harder to pull so the energy would increase because we would need more energy to pull those electrons away from chlorine versus mg and so the answer is a it would generally increase and this has to do with the m more protons so more charge in the center, so more attraction. And number six, which of the following is most electronegative? A, C, L, B, S, E, C, N, A, or D, I. And uh, all these are in the non-metal section. So, um, which of the following is most electronegative? So, to be electronegative, first of all, let's define electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability for an element to take an electron. And in order to take, you want the most protons and you want the least shielding. You, don't, you want most protons so you have most attraction to the center. And you want least shielding so you have more of your force projected on those electrons to pull them in. And so, so which of the following has the most... Um, least shielding. Let's just find that first. So I is in period 5, Na is in period 3, Se is in period 4, and the Cl is in period 3. So uh, two of them are in period 3, so you can eliminate the other two because they're in period 4 and period 5. Those have way more shielding. And then let's look at protons. So which one out of Cl and Na has more protons, so more force towards the center. Na is all the way on the right, I mean left, and then Cl is all the way on the right. So it, on the right side of the periodic table we have m higher atomic numbers and so we have more protons. So the answer is A. It is Cl because it has the most protons, so most attraction and least shielding. So most projection of the force. And let's look at question 7. The noble gases have a, high ionization energies, B, high electronegativities, C, large atomic radii, D, a tendency to form both cations and anions. And let's just go by and eliminate these. So let's just start from D. A tendency to form both cations and anions? Well, this is, we didn't really talk about the noble gases, but they do not form ions because they are satisfied with their electrons. They don't want to gain or lose any electrons. So that would be wrong. And then C, large atomic radii. They unfortunately do not have a large atomic radii compared to the elements of their own uh, periods because they have the most protons out of each of their groups. So, I mean, periods. So because they have the most protons, they have the most attraction. So they're the smallest of each of their periods. And uh, B, high, electroneg high electronegativity, that is false because most noble gases don't even have any electronegativity because they don't even want to react. But A, they do have high ionization energy. Because they have the most protons and attraction force, they have they do not want to lose their electrons. And so that is why they have high ionization energies. And so here's a little bonus part. And so this sort of combines e the last video's information and this video's too. And so alkali metals have lower ionization energies than halogens because A, alkali metals are smaller with more protons. B, Halogens are larger with more protons. C. Alkali metals are larger with lower nuclear charges. Or D. Halogens are smaller with fewer protons. 
And so let's just go through each answer and just discuss it. So alkali, so A says alkali metals are smaller with more protons. That is true than the halogens because they, no, actually, never mind. Alkali metals are larger and they have less protons, so that is false. Then let's look at B. Halogens are larger with more protons. That is also false because if you have more protons, you would be smaller. So B is also false. C. Alkali metals are larger with lower nuclear charges. That is true. Or uh, D. Halogens are smaller with fewer protons. So halogens are... And so... Uh, um, the correct answer is C because, um, because alkali metals ha have, uh, lower charges and they're larger, so pretty much they have more rings, it's harder for them to, uh, it's, it's, uh, easy for them to lose an electron because they can easily lose an electron because, uh, they have less charges in the nucleus and because they have more shielding so because they have more shielding it's harder for them to pull in their electrons and all the actually no d all d is also incorrect so you can pretty much eliminate the answer to c because all these others are incorrect because halogens are smaller that's true but they have to have more protons with more protons because they have more attractive force so you can eliminate all these by just looking at if they're correct or not. And here's the last question. Fluorine is the most electronegative halogen because it is A, larger with more energy levels, B, smaller with more energy levels, C, smaller with fewer energy levels, D, larger with fewer energy levels. So Fluorine is uh, at the very top of the halogens column, and so because it's at the top, it has less energy levels. So you can eliminate A and B, and because it has less energy levels, it must be smaller because simply has less rings. So the correct answer is C. So fluorine, because it's small, has less rings, it can project its force out on those electrons and easier to pull them in and um, also because it has the most protons in its uh, period that that's also why it's more most electronegative also and that is the end of unit four I hope this helped you learn about the periodic trends and the next unit will be about ionic bonding and if you have any questions, ask your teachers, and we'll see you later.